Hey everyone, it's Vosk with the Vosk on YouTube channel. I'm here with Tails, and we're gonna teach you everything you need to know about crypto mining difficulty. Understanding what mining difficulty is is absolutely critical when you're a miner. So today I'm gonna to cover some of the popular coins, their difficulty, how that's affected, and what you really need to know. But step one of anything cryptocurrency related is always to subscribe to the Vosk on YouTube channel. I'll close in on 50k smash that uh, subscribe button and let's make it happen if you saw my video yesterday on the boss Coin youtube channel you'll see i talked about gpu mining is it still profitable should you build a rig and so forth uh i'm not going to spoil it so you should click on that and check that out but one topic i didn't touch on in that video i should have touched on some but i'm here to cover that in its entirety today is mining difficulty and how exactly does it work first off let's start with bitcoin because ultimately that's what everything was based around you know, whether it wants to agree with that or not, was the godfather of crypto, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has a block time target of 10 minutes. What does that mean? So the miners solve a block every 10 minutes. Someone, some, one of their miners is gonna solve the block and they're all gonna be probably be in a mining pool and that reward is gonna be distributed to everyone in that mining pool. That's a really basic version of how that works. They also verify all of the transactions that took place. And with that, the money you pay to move your Bitcoin from you know point A to point B is redistributed to the miners. That way that, that's why that Bitcoin doesn't just go away and it's an incentive to keep Keep these miners securing and moving the network forward so here so why does the chart look like this bitcoin's difficulty is readjusted roughly every two weeks to ensure it's maintaining that 10 minute block time and you'll see it's had a pretty big increase recently and uh, that's not good because if you look at the price point it's actually kind of been going down every chart i'm going to show you today is going to be the last three months that's the period i'm going to cover for this video and a big part of that is is because of big bad Bitmain, let's go to Bitmain if you're not familiar. Bitmain is the ASIC hardware man manufacturer who actually, actually says right there, just reported a higher revenue share than NVIDIA, which is insane. That is, it, that is crazy and not necessarily a good thing. But anyway, Bitmain makes ant miners and they pump out miners like crazy. That's what ASIC mining is. So that's one other story. That's why I'm a GPU miner and a bigger fan of GPU mining, which is why I covered actual GPU mining profitability and the long-term outlook on that yesterday. So that's Bitcoin to give you some background on Bitcoin. But let's talk about Zencash. This is what I can give you the most insight on because I'm a big Zencash miner. With that, I've watched Zencash difficulty affect me tremendously. So way back when, last summer, I was Zencash was like five bucks, and I was mining a couple Zencash a day per rig. It was awesome. You know, everybody likes getting more coins as opposed to like less coins. It's not as appealing to mine 0.001 Bitcoin as it is to mine, you know, say three Zcash or Zencash. How does the difficulty affect that and ensure that everything's working properly? So Zencash is based off of Zcash. And they both work on the Equihash algorithm, which if you use what to mine, you'll see which coins are on Equihash. For example, Zcash, Zencash, Z Classic, and there's uh, several others. So the Equihash algorithm readjusts the block difficulty after every block. Every block is solved, or one block is solved every two and a half minutes. And with that, the miners receive a block reward. So once that block is solved, 12 and a half Zencash will be distributed between the miners and the mining pool that solved that block, the DAO, and the secure notes. I've got breakdowns on that in like my What is Zen Cash video, which you can check out on the channel. But basically, there's that 12 and a half Zen plus all of the transaction fees. Again, you know, if it costs me 0.0001 Zen to send you Zen, that goes back to the network and gets you know lumped into that block reward to the miners, which is great. So we got a basic idea of what difficulty is, right? Sort of, maybe if I'm explaining it decent at all. We'll see. So let's look at it. Overall, the difficulty is always going to trend up if the project is moving forward at all. And you can see here, big drop off. Why? December 6th, 7th? Let's look at the price. We're on coin market cap. And if we look at the price right here, December 6th, 7th, you can see big drop in price. And with that, miners seeking the highest profitable, profitable coin to mine by using sites like What to Mine or a profit switching site like Mining Pool Hub and NiceHash those miners are then redirected to a coin that's doing better at that time. And, you know, that's good and bad, I guess. That's a whole other subject, but that's what that is. And you'll see, you know, the price will go up and it'll go down. And you'll see the difficulty chart will roughly reflect that. Overall, the difficulty is sadly going to be a little bit more steady in an uptrend, at least with, you know, the way our current market go is going. 
and you'll see less harsh drop-offs, especially if it's a project people believe in and want to mine and hold long-term or they're just lazy with their miners or whatever. I mean, I like to set my miners and semi-forget about them sometimes. Sometimes I want to chase the highest profitable coin. Your mileage will vary and it's really what you want to do. Let's go over to Zcash. Again, this is Equihash algorithm. It's readjusting the difficulty every block, but wait, what, why, why is that relevant? Because if the difficulty was not adjusted, then that would lead to issues in too many coins being distributed, too many blocks being solved too quickly. This way, by adjusting the difficulty, you are making it just as hard for that same group of miners to get that same reward. So you've got 12 and a half Zen, 12 and a half Zcash, you know, whatever coin you want to insert there. And by increasing the difficulty, as everyone's going to naturally increase the miners and the hash rate, it then balances it out. This is critical for the longevity of a project to survive and to have a good stable hash rate and a productive network. Ultimately, every difficulty is going to be a little different. For example, each coin has a different method. Bitcoin's SHA-256 algorithm has a di different difficulty adjustment than, for example, Zcash and Zencash's Equihash adjustment period. Same with Ethereum on the Dagger Hashimoto network. Their network has a whole difficulty bomb built in, the Ice Aids, trying to freeze out the miners, all kinds of crazy stuff. That is a whole deep dive, in-depth read on its own, which I'm not going to dive into this video. But the bottom line is, is that difficulty is an important piece of the pie to watch. It's okay if difficulty is going up. That's expected. And if we look here at the difficulty of Zencash in the last three months to be relatively stable between you know 500k and 750k, even though it just touched a thousand k, which you know is a Zencash miner, I'm not stoked to see that. And then you know we look over here, we're down at six million, we're going up towards you know eight, ten million, and you know in this time period, these prices have relatively increased you know there's been a huge market correction so it's kind of hard to judge it there but you'll see for example zencash's price against the bitcoin is doing great and the same is going to be with zcash so it depends how you want to look at the actual prices do you want to base everything in your life around usd fiat or do you want to look at the price against the bitcoin it depends what you truly believe in and value but i like to view things against the bitcoin and the fact that we're up here instead of being down there is always a good sign a great quick access tool to see what the network hash rate is doing, which will directly affect your mining difficulty is, uh, you know, again, what to mine. I've been referencing this a lot lately and it's really a good, easy to use tool. So I've got six 1080 TIs plugged in here. It's going to give me the estimated profitability. That's no big deal. But what we have here is a network hash rate. And if you're like me, you check this all the time and you just start to get a number in your head. And you know, I see the Zencash hash right around 50 mega hash. I'd say that's pretty much average for you know everything that's going on lately. This has been up to 80K. This has been up higher too. And I remember the days when this hash rate was like, you know, two, three, four, five mega hash, or it's really mega souls a second. Now we're 10 times that. And the price is, you know, it's been 10 times that as well. So again, these are things to keep in mind and to watch and understand that these are directly going to affect you. And for better and worse, all the miners who are set up to do profit switching or do it manually, they will relatively keep everything, or not to say relatively again, but relatively stable and relevant. The best way to mine a crazy profitable coin is to be you know, doing heavy research and to find that new coin that's got a good team and be mining that. For example, a lot of people are placing a lot of bets on Bitcoin Z, which if you look through this chart, is not tracked by what to mine currently. Once Bitcoin Z gets into a big exchange, that'll be a different story. However, that's a bigger gamble, which could in turn potentially have bigger gains. I don't know, that's the place you're gonna have to you know, put your risks if that's something you're interested in doing. So there it is guys, that's my take on mining difficulty. I don't wanna drown you in you know, a bunch of definitions and this and that. I wanted to show you a little bit inside of real world, how to look at it. Again, I'm using CoinWars with a Z.com. If you just Google Zencash difficulty chart, Zcash difficulty chart, Bitcoin uh, difficulty chart, you'll see that you'll get the links pretty much top result to that site. And that's gonna give you some good insight there. It, you really gotta spend your time researching this and dig a little bit deeper to be an informed miner and make your informed decisions that are gonna do the best for you. Whether you're mining to support a project you like or you're mining for max profitability, 
or you just want to make sure you're going to you know, do well on your mining and make sure you, you make your break even point, your ROI. Was your mining a good investment? That's up to you to ensure that it is. So let me know in the comments below if you liked my take on mining difficulty or if you didn't. I'm always reading that stuff, so I really appreciate you guys take the time to comment on the video. Y'all make this worthwhile. And with that said, I know I said it earlier, but smash that like button or subscribe button or smash it both actually because we're going for 50K and this is a really exciting time because one of my life goals has always been to get a silver play button and you're like, you don't get a silver play button for 50K. <sighs> I know, but 100K and 50K is halfway there. So with that said, guys, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.